Hi guys. Well, I guess it's turning into a pleasant enough day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the social isolation chamber of Garfield, Texas here on this breezy <coughs> Tuesday morning, <coughs> April 7th, <coughs> 2020, somewhere in there. Anyway, this is the Coronavirus Chronicles, and I am Sam, I'm sorry, the Corona Panic Chronicles, and I am Sam Mitchell. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, doing what we have done pretty much every day for the past two or three weeks and probably will be continuing to do for the next several, and that is to uh, <coughs> chronicle how the Corona Panic not the coronavirus, the corona panic is pretty much grinding the global industrial economy and perhaps global industrial civilization along with it to a grinding halt. Uh, <clears throat> so I was going to do what I was planning to do <clears throat> today guys, we were going to go over to Africa and wander around the collapsing continent of sub-Saharan Africa to see how the coronavirus is playing out there and what are my predictions for the knock-on effects of that as uh, more and more Africans facing starvation, what that means uh, for every other species of earthling humans share the planet with in Africa, but yesterday I barely mentioned Africa. Barely mentioned. If you listen to my, what, 30-minute rant yesterday, I spent less than 30 seconds, I believe, talking about Africa. I turn on my comments today, the single most expletive-filled, just barrage of vitriolic hatred being hurled my way, you know, that I am a racist, you know, on and on, that any white man <clears throat> saying anything bad about sub-Saharan Africa is, is just a scum of the earth, evil racist, uh, and that white people do not have the right <clears throat> to, uh, to talk about Africa, and so I had that, and then I had uh, the the more uh, uh, the more obvious uh, point that nobody cares what happens to Africa, uh, and so that's really the main reason that I changed the focus of this Corona Panic Chronicle. Now, maybe somewhere else in the doomosphere. Somewhere else in the doomosphere, uh, there will be some sort of rant on sub-Saharan Africa. Just a possibility, but uh, anyway, we will see where that rumor leads. But we're going to come back mostly to our, to our own country, uh, although you can probably lump the U.S. and Africa and Europe in Australia, everywhere on the entire planet into this story from good old Bloomberg and I want to uh, thank uh, Alert Tribes member Michael Daniel for sending me this hot off the presses of good old Bloomberg today from their business story uh, and then at the end of this I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about this anti-malarial drug that's being so much discussed because it talks about that. So we'll be talking a little bit about that. But first, what is Bloomberg? How are they weighing in on it? Bloomberg business today? <clears throat> Would you get that bug like that? Get that bug. Michael Burry of the Big Short slams virus lockdown in tweet storm. The investor, who also has an MD, says the economic costs of the pandemic response 
are too high. Michael Burry, the doctor turned investor who famously bet against mortgage securities before the 2008 financial crisis, has taken to Twitter with a controversial message lockdowns intended to contain the coronavirus pandemic are worse than the disease itself. Thank you very much, Michael Burry. And, you know, and, and good for Bloomberg having the balls to actually print this. <laughs> Government directed shutdowns in the U.S which led to millions of job losses and may, may, will trigger one of the country's deepest ever economic contractions. Again, it's not one of, it very well could be this country's deepest depression ever in the history of this country. Government directed shutdowns in the U.S., blah, 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 are not necessary to contain the epidemic and have disproportionately hurt low-income families and minorities and, uh, you know, white guys trying to sell a house. <sighs> Burry argued in a series of tweets over the past two weeks, he also said some controversial treatments for coronavirus, such as the anti-malarial drug hydroxychloroquine, should be made more widely available. And we're going to come back to that at the end of this Bloomberg story. I see the wind has decided to pick up now. This is cottonwood fluff blowing everywhere, uh, by the way, guys. <clears throat> Anyway, I'm going to plow ahead through the wind. Burry earned his MD at Vanderbilt University School of Medicine, but decided to become a professional investor after making hugely profitable bets in the stock market. He shot to fame after his hedge fund's bearish mortgage wagers were chronicled in the big short, an Oscar-winning movie based on the best-selling book by Michael Lewis. Although Burry has mostly kept a low profile since then, little dog, <clears throat> since then, he started sharing his views more widely last year to warn of a central bank fueled bubble in passive investment products. He is now focusing on the outbreak that has shuttered economies killed almost 75,000 people worldwide, you know, out of a population of 8 billion, about as many people as will be born in the next three hours, and changed how millions of people live and work. Quoting Burry, uh, Universal stay-at-home is the most devastating economic force in modern history, and it is man-made. It very suddenly reverses the gains of underprivileged, underprivileged groups, such as white people trying to sell their houses, kills and creates drug addicts, beats and terrorizes women and children in violent, now jobless households, and more. It bleeds deep anguish and suicide, close quote. I was reporting on just a few of the stories yesterday about uh, the skyrocketing uh, domestic violence cases and these murder suicides, and I think the UN was uh, talking about this warning about how we can expect uh, domestic violence to go through the roof. Uh, back to Bloomberg. <clears throat> Burry, whose utterances are closely watched by the financial community, began tweeting on March 23rd 
describing his handle as the quote, real personal account of the real weird one from the book and movie. He said he began speaking out because of how people were suffering from measures taken to contain the pandemic. Unconscionable is how he described job losses in the U.S. which have caused a once unthinkable 10 million people to apply for unemployment benefits of the past two weeks. Uh, this is, I guess this is his very first tweet maybe from uh, March 23rd. <clears throat> if COVID-19 testing were universal, the fatality rate would be less than 0.2%. There is no justification for sweeping government policies lacking any and all nuance that destroys the lives, jobs, and businesses of the other 99.8%. Burry has taken on medical policymakers and tweets regarding the illness itself saying coronavirus infections can be managed through common sense measures hmm, like increased hand washing and broader testing without forcing everyone to stay at home. He is also advocating for wider use of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine to treat those who are infected. Uh, we're gonna say we're gonna come back to this in a minute. Uh, on Sunday, U.S. Surgeon General Jerome Adams said there had been some accounts that the anti-malarial was helping. Quote, quoting the U.S. Surgeon General, quote, we feel a little bit better regarding its safety than we do about a completely novel drug, even though this is being used at much higher dosages, he said. Anyway, back, we'll come back to that. Uh, this, this new uh, anti-malarial drug is the, is the corona panic story of the day. That's why Bloomberg keeps coming back to it and why we are. But anyway, getting back to the police state, <clears throat> Burry has so far refrained from tweeting about his investments. Uh, he said the pandemic could unwind the passive investment boom, which he has compared to purchases of collateralized debt obligations that fuel the pre-2008 mortgage bubble. While Burry has been mostly critical of the economic and medical measures taken by authorities across the globe, he has also highlighted large economies that have not seen as much turmoil as the U.S. and Britain. Germany and Japan have been more measured in their response and offer a model for the rest of the world, Burry said. Uh, this is... In a tweet on March 25th, Burry issued his own perception for Americans to overcome the crisis. Prudent plan. Number one, standardize on chloroquine and azithromycin, cheap and available. Number two, sick and elderly voluntarily shelter in place. Number three, Americans lead their normal lives with extra hand washing and special care if around the elderly. Saving the economy means life, not murder. Yes. <clears throat> Burry responded to questions via email to offer more thoughts on the pandemic and the response to the outbreak. 
Here is what he had to say about China's response, how some countries have handled the outbreak differently and the long-term impact. Okay, so from here on out, this is Burry on how the pandemic happened. This is a new form of coronavirus that emanated from China that unfortunately covered it up. That was the original sin. It transmits very easily and, and within the first month it was likely all over the world very poor testing infrastructure created an information vacuum as cases ramped, ventilator shortage were, shortages were projected. Politicians panicked and media filled the space with their own ignorance and greed. It was a toxic mix that led to the shutdown of the U.S and hence much of the world economy. <clears throat> uh, my computer likes to jump around. Uh, come back computer. In hindsight, each country should have immediately ramped up rapid field testing of at-risk groups but as I understand it, the CDC was tasked with some of this and botched it, and another depart and other departments were no better. The bureaucracy failed in a good number of countries. Turf wars and incompetence has ruled the day. So the political cover for that failure on the part of the technocrats and politicians is a very harsh stay-at-home policy. If there was ever a time for the government to stimulate with fiscal and monetary policy, it is now. Unfortunately, the U.S. has been adding three dollars for every one dollar of new GDP over a very long time and interest rates were already near zero. Still, Nothing is more important now than loans to small and mid-sized businesses and the U.S. Treasury backed by the Fed is providing that liquidity which is vital. I'm sure we will get some argument over that. Uh, okay, so this is his view of the potential treatments. <clears throat> Quote, it is pretty clear that hydrochloroquine is doing something good for many uh, coronavirus patients. The standard in medicine is a placebo-controlled double-blind study, which is exactly what's happening, uh, which I'll mention in a minute, but there is no time for that. The technocrats at the, at the top are getting this wrong. Do the studies, make the vaccines, but allow doctors to have what they feel is working now. Don't take tools or drugs out of the treating doctor's hands. Trump should use the Defense Production Act more literally in this area. A more nuanced approach would be for at-risk groups, the obese, the old, and already sick, to shelter in place, to execute widespread mandatory testing, and to ID and track as necessary while allowing society to function. Again, <clears throat> Trump should get the massive contract manufacturers like Flextronics to make testing machines." Close quote. Okay, what about getting back to normal? <clears throat> Here's his prescription for getting back to normal. Good luck. I would lift stay-at-home orders except for known risk groups. We already know certain conditions that are predictive of severe disease, especially since young, healthy lungs 
tend to be resistant, I would let the virus circulate in the population that is not likely to get severe disease from it. This is the only path that comes close to balancing the needs of all groups. Vaccines are not coming anytime soon, so natural immunity is the only way for now. Every day, every week, in the current situation is ruining innumerable, innumerable lives in a criminally unjust manner. When it comes to vaccines, coronaviruses are not known for imparting enduring immunity, and this will be one big challenge. It seems the genetic code is relatively conserved, and this will help the development of the vaccine, but we're still looking at the end of the year. In the meantime, the world is an innovative place, and I expect many effective treatments, both new and repurposed shortly. The question then will be regulation, expense, and availability. Medically, the new normal will be the old normal. As long as innovation continues, medicine will conquer everything in our way. Close quote we shall see. So what does he have to say about Japan's response? I believe Prime Minister Shinzo Abe is trying his best to manage through the situation without shuttering the Japanese economy. He sees what it, that has done to the U.S. and would rather not force a shut-in but instead asks for common sense. Japan has certain features, such as a largely lawful and well-educated society, that makes this more possible, as do Taiwan, Singapore, and Korea. And finally, what does Mr. Burry have to say about business recovery? <clears throat> Economically speaking, we have to realize the policy-driven demand shock will be resolved by 2021. Uh, we shall see. <clears throat> but Japan and the U.S. are putting more than 20% of the GDP into new fiscal stimulus, and easy money will be the rule. Those things will all bring stock and debt markets back. Countries will also look to bring supply chains home, and many employees will need retraining with higher cost. When we start working and playing again, inflation may be in store. The other big point is that consumers have learned new behaviors, which will drive business churn. I'm not sure what drive business churn means, but we will find out. So anyway, uh, as you well know, there is all sorts of uh, stories uh, about these anti-malarial drugs, even with a Bill Gates. Oh, well, I thought I, I accidentally clicked on to the, to the headline, Bill Gates believes U.S. coronavirus death toll might be lower than White House estimates. But that is not what I meant to... Uh... Okay. <clears throat> so what is Bill and Melinda up to other than saying uh, that uh, Donald Trump is overestimating how many people will die in the coronavirus? University of Washington studies anti-malarial drugs use to head off coronavirus with Gates Foundation aid. So how much is $100 million, I think, Bill Gates is spending to save the planet? Uh,
from uh, coronavirus. University of Washington researchers are among the leaders of a newly announced clinical trial investigating whether hydroxychloroquine, a drug that is commonly used to counter malaria and autoimmune diseases, can prevent COVID-19. The multi-site trial managed by University of Washington in collaboration with New York University's uh, Grossman School of Medicine aims to determine definitively whether taking the drug can prevent transmission in people exposed to the virus. Uh, this is Principal Investigator Ruan Barnabas. Quote, we currently do not know if hydroxychloroquine works, but we will learn in as short a time, prime, time frame as possible what the outcome is. The trial is due to run for eight weeks with results expected this summer. Other small scale studies have led to suggestions that hydrochloroquine sulfate and a related drug, chloroquine phosphate, might help head off coronavirus infections, but so far results are mixed. <clears throat> the promise of protection from coronavirus was touted several times by Donald Trump, causing concern about its availability for its traditional purposes. The drugs also have potentially life-threatening side effects if used improperly. What this is is a bagworm crawling on the lens of the camera. I am being infested by bagworms here in Garfield, Texas today. And then I thought this was interesting. University of Washington uh, physicians are already using hydroxychloroquine to treat patients who have been diagnosed with coronavirus. Huh, I just had to, then there's a link over to that story uh, titled UW Treating COVID-19 Patients with Anti-Malarial Drug Researcher Calls It Very Promising. Huh. Researchers and physicians at the University of Washington are, tr are treating patients diagnosed with COVID-19 using a drug best known as a therapy for malaria. Part of a broader global effort to evaluate existing medication and treatments in the battle against the disease. Uh, the drug hydroxychloroquine is, quote, very promising, close quote, as a treatment for coronavirus, said Rodney J.Y. Ho, a professor and uh, from the University of Washington who is work, working closely with researchers at the university. Uh, there are certain stages of this disease when the drug may be helpful, the doctor said. Uh, however, uh, he cautions that it has not gone through clinical trials, hmm, and there's not enough data to reach definitive conclusions about its effectiveness in treating the disease. Uh, but anyway, back to the first story. Uh, so what happened on Sunday? On Sunday, the Food and Drug Administration officially authorized the emergency use of both hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine for use against COVID-19. The Food and Drug Administration has officially authorized the emergency use uh, to boost supplies for hospital treatments and clinical trials. 
the Department of Health and Human Services accepted donations of 30 million doses of the drug. Uh, anyway, guys, I am I am uh, getting just you know they say confuse them till they die, uh, and now my cursor has died. And then they. So I guess there's going to be 2,000 uh, participants in this uh, in this study. Uh, all right, the nine and a half million dollar clinical trial is one of three studies receiving grants from the $125 million initiative launched by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. <laughs> so that'll really get the conspirators panties in a wad that uh, Bill Gates is not trying to depopulate the planet. You know, Bill Gates all of these right-wing conspirators saying that Bill Gates is the Antichrist uh, and is the number one architect of the New World Order's depopulation agenda. I have pointed out many times that more, pe more sub-Saharan Africans are alive today because of Bill Gates uh, than any human being in history. The population of Sub-Saharan Africa would not be nearly where it is, but uh, the population of Sub-Saharan Africa is probably getting ready to go back to where it was before Bill Gates uh, ever brought the first vaccine over there, but I can see I'm heading into white man racist uh, territory. So if I want to continue in this vein, I should take it somewhere else. So I am wisely going to wrap up today's edition of the Corona Panic uh, Chronicle. So if you liked what this fellow, uh, Mr. Burry, Mike, I already forgot his first name, had to say, please thumb, thumb him up and say thank you for pointing out there's two sides to this story and you can um, certainly subscribe to Corona Panic Chronicles while you're over here and now I have to get out a, an electron microscope and a uh, team of bloodhounds to find one story on planet Earth today talking about the collapse of a planet that does not talk about coronavirus after I get these damn bagworms off of me. They're completely tearing up my beautiful little mulberry tree. Anyway, bye guys.